I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 459 of this podcast. Yes, yes, a little Lebowski Urban Achievers and proud we are of all of that. Uh, excited about today. Excited about this week. I've been having fun with uh, the summer of Rocky that we've been doing. I'm not going to ask you yet how you feel about the Rocky franchise, buddy, because I have some ideas about how you feel about it, but we'll talk about it when we get to the movie. So I will say, though, I, I, we were going to do the summer of SNL movies, and I think that it, as far as our self-esteem and our mental health, I think the summer of Rocky was a better choice. I'm just saying, I I would want to kill myself if I had to watch all the SNL movies. So, well, I, I just can't imagine having to watch Stuart Saves His Family and It's Bad. And the cone ads. I, uh, uh, I'd rather watch Rocky Balboa. But anyway, it's monologue time. Jeff! Now, Bunny, to be clear, your name is not Jeff, Bunny. No. Uh, Jeff is the name of our occasionally reoccurring podcast segment within the monologue wherein we do a bunch of different bits, a few news segments, a few funny bits, etc. It's like a podcast smorgasbord. Podcasting potpourri, if you will. Uh, now, I much preferred the other name that we were going to name this, the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. However, we both agreed on the name Jeff for this uh, occasionally reoccurring bit and so that's our decision so let's do this thing first off uh i've got some news huge news the coneheads was off the coneheads was off the only good thing about the coneheads movie uh is the fact that the band bare naked ladies does does a cover of the public enemy song fight the power that's like that's like the Osmonds doing fuck the police. That, that's like um that's like uh, John Denver doing a cover of um Cop Killer. It's impressive and it's one of my favorite songs of the Bare Naked Ladies. First off, if there is a noise that you hear in the background, it is Sunday. It is laundry day. The laundry room's right here and I apologize if you hear any banging or anything like that. But I have news. Uh, I'm trans. I know that probably comes as a shock to you, Bunny. No, no, we're not. Because uh, I, because I've been uh, openly trans for over two years now. Two years of identifying as a trans woman, and one year of being on hormone replacement therapy, that is going to fall. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Bud Light, I'm here. Hey, yeah, I can be the spokesperson for Tecate Blue. I have no problem with that. Tecate Blue. It's like Tecate, except it doesn't taste like shit. That's the commercial right there. Oh. So, uh, but as a trans woman, I deal with a lot of, am I trans enough? Am I enough of a trans person? I, 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 I keep putting these roadblocks towards my womanhood. Oh, well, I may identify as a, as a woman, but I'm not really a trans woman, not until I get on hormones. Okay, well, I'm on hormones, but it, it, I had an uncle, uh, Uncle Javier, 
And he liked to fiddle around with the guitar. And one day my brother said, oh, hey, Uncle Javier, I learned how to play the guitar. And my uncle just went, oh, you learned how to play the guitar? Do you know how to play Stairway to Heaven yet? No. Oh, well, then you don't know how to play the guitar. Because uh, no one knows how to play the guitar until they can play Stairway to Heaven. So my brother got all pissed off and he learned Stairway to Heaven. And then the next, uh, I don't know, a baptism or funeral. My brother's like, hey, Uncle Javier, I learned how to play Stairway to Heaven. Oh, do you know how to play American Pie? Oh, because no one's a guitar player until... And my, he, my uncle kept putting roadblocks towards my brother being a, a guitar player. And I keep doing that in my head. Oh, yeah, I'm on HRT, but I'm not really a, a trans woman until I've had a surgery. Oh, I've had a surgery. Oh, well, I'm not... So anyway, I, I made a... Uh... Well, I had a surgery. And... Uh, I can't have babies no more. It, it, it's funny because I get attacked a lot on, on social media, on, on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter by all of these bigots. And I love getting attacked because half of the time it helps me. It helps my self-esteem. Like one person said, oh, just because you have a pretty wig on your head doesn't mean that you're not secretly a man. And it's like, so you think my hair is pretty? Thank you. That is so sweet of you. And then uh, someone else said, just because you've had a uh, 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 plastic surgery doesn't mean that uh, that you're a woman. And it's like, so you think my face looks nice? Thank you. That is so sweet of you. It's the thing is, is that there, yeah, basically, there's a lot of people out there who just they spend all of their time on social media attacking trans women, and it's like, okay, so you set up this Twitter account to attack trans women on so on social media, and then you were banned, so you set up a second one, and then that one was banned, and now you're on like your seventh account, and going through your replies. All you're doing is attacking trans people, and it looks like you're on here for a couple of hours a day doing nothing but attacking attacking trans women. So uh, that seems like an obsession, or uh, another word for it, a fetish. A lot of the people who are like, I hate trans women. That's why I spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week doing nothing but attacking trans women. Yeah, it's called a fetish, bro. It's fine if you have a she folder on your computer, but don't take it out on me. I'm just a stay-at-home freaking mom. But I, I, I set a roadblock for myself, and just uh, about an hour ago, I, I successfully completed yet another sign of my trans womanhood. This is my Blaha shark. Because for whatever reason, the Blaha plushies from Ikea have become a trans icon. You just search Blaha on anywhere. You just search Blaha and you'll find like a million of them. Uh, a millions of fig Every trans woman has one of these. And our closest Ikea is three and a half four hours away so uh i ordered one with my paycheck from my main stage performance at okc pride fest so this is my uh new blaha shark and because he came in today i am naming him rocky so this is Rocky the Blaha Shark, and I love him. I bought a second one for Mal, but I'm not giving it to Mal until it's his birthday in September, and he's effing pissed. It's like a normal birthday. It's almost your birthday, and I got you something, so of course I'm going to save it until your birthday. No, I'm giving it to you as I'm giving it to you on your birthday. 
They are pissed. They are pissed. You don't have to name you don't have to name your shark after the Rocky franchise, but if you want to name yours Apollo or Polly, those would be great names to uh, go with with Rocky here. So I'm really happy that I have a that I I'm finally a trans woman because I have a Blaha shark that I can just take a million pictures of and take everywhere I go. So I'm happy about that. Funny. I have a new impression. Are you ready for this, Bunny? I'm really proud of this. This is this is a good one that I think that most people will be able to relate to. Uh, <laughs> on a deep personal level, I think a lot of people will relate to this. This is an impression of every person on the planet singing the song Killer Queen by Queen. Because, oh, driving around, and it's like, oh, let me put on that song on my on my phone. Uh, Killer Queen by Queen. You heard that song? I love that song. That's one of my that's one of my favorite songs of Queen. I love that song. Oh, here it comes on. Oh, I love this song. She keeps a murder in her pretty cabinet. Just like Mary Antoinette. Building the deputy Kennedy, but you can't decline. Caviar and cigarettes. Is extraordinarily nice. She's a killer queen. Dynamite with a laser beam, guaranteed to blow your mind anytime. Who recommended the insatiable? Wanna try? Anyway, I love this song. This is my favorite Queen song. I know all the words. So that's my impression of everyone singing along to the song Killer Queen. I love that impression. I'm in love with my car. I liked how that song was like a punchline in the Queen movie. I still haven't gotten over the Queen movie. That it's like, okay, this this is about a gay man and his fight with AIDS and, his, and he's partying and he's leaving this crazy life and we're going to make this movie. Let's talk to the band members. And the band members are like, well, the music of Queen is for everyone. So we want a G-rated film. What the fuck? What the fuck? I still can't get over that. Uh, in other news, Bunny, did you hear about Kentucky? It's not that they did it now. They've always been doing this. It's effing weird. Okay, apparently, thanks to a very, 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 very old rule, any and all politicians and elected officials that get sworn into office in Kentucky, every single one for decades now, centuries now, um, when they get sworn into office in Kentucky, in their oath of office is a section where they have to swear that they have not ever and will never engage in a duel. That is something that's been on the books since like 1800s and it's still on there. And to this day, you have like, a, I don't know, it's 2025 and a, a black trans woman is taking the oath of office. And it's like, well, hold on a second. You forgot. I say you forgot. <laughs> it's Kentucky. <laughs> you forgot. I say you forgot to. Uh... First off, in Kentucky, they don't use a Bible. You swear on a tub of KFC. It, well, there's moonshine in the KFC bucket. And then it is, oh, don't forget the part where you swear you haven't been in a duel. That's just freaking weird. In the in the year of our Lord, 2023, 
people are swearing that they haven't been in a duel. And that blows me away. Some people want it removed from the oath of office because they say it makes Kentucky look backwards and behind the times, which, yeah. And some people want it kept in because of history and yada, yada, yada. But here's my idea, Bunny. Bunny, here's my idea. Do you think we could spin this, Bunny? What if we make dueling popular with the far right? And they start dueling themselves out of existence. Right. Um, and also, what about a fencing competition? Does is that would that that would that kind of be considered a duel? Can you play Yu-Gi-Oh at all? Because that's also a duel. Uh, playing Yu-Gi-Oh. That's a card duel. Are Pokemon cards just completely illegal in this in the state of Kentucky? No, what I think is the Democrats say, OK, we need to remove this from the rule books. In we need to get rid of this from the oath of office in Kentucky because this is old and outdated, and we need need to get rid of this. And and the Democrats keep saying that so that the Republicans, because the Republicans are basically like a Daffy Duck arguing, uh, uh, rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season. So if you want Republicans to be for something, Democrats just have to be against it. So we get the Dems out there, and they're all about getting rid of the duel, and then that will force the Republicans to go, oh, and now these these liberal communist hippies are trying to get rid of our dueling? Dueling is a proud tradition. And then next thing you know, all the Republicans are shooting themselves, shooting each other. I think that's a decent idea. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. They, you you get an election of like 12 people and then you whittle it down to just two and then you have them duel for the position. And then you like put it on TV. That would work. Have you seen them? <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a movie from 2022 called Duel and it's really good. It's like a science fiction satire thriller starring Karen Gillan. She 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 uh she's uh the British woman who was uh Nebula who's Nebula in the MCU. It's a really great movie and I highly recommend it. Duel from 2022. Uh meanwhile Donald. Oh, I forgot about that. We did that, didn't we? Didn't we do that? I think we did. I think we did. That was a fun movie. I like that film. That was basically... Um, Battle Royale. The Japanese novel turned into an amazing Japanese film. That is incredible and uh, blows me away, and I absolutely love it, and there's nothing to compare it to. But if I had to pick an American battle royale, I wouldn't pick The Hunger Games. I would pick Series 7, The Contender. And, and the movie was done by people who worked at Survivor and... Uh, other reality game show type things. So it has a reality to it. Series 7, The Contender. Love that movie. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is going through some shit. Ever. About time. Ever. Uh, yeah, you should be hearing Bunny. I hear Bunny. 
Uh, how about this? Until we figure out this problem, I'll just tell you what Bunny says. What's that, Bunny? Bunny says that I look incredibly beautiful. Thank you, Bunny. What was that? Uh, Bunny says that uh, Barnes & Noble was wrong to fire me. Thank you, Bunny. What else was that? Oh, I do think I look good in these earrings. Thank you so much. These are 100% things that Bunny are saying. So, while well, Bunny, while you try and figure that out, and also, uh, viewer, thank you for letting us know you can't hear Bunny. And please uh, let us know when and if you can hear Bunny. Maybe if you could just yodel, Bunny. And you just keep yodeling. And then when the sound comes on, if a if, uh, viewer could let us know when you can hear Bunny's yodeling, that would be wonderful. So I'm going to continue. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is going through some shit. Every day it's something new, and he's rage truth socialing, which in full on all caps panic mode. And it's fascinating. I don't understand how people can that believe be a, a word that Donald Trump says, because basically what he's going through is uh, every day he's getting on social media and he's going, uh, well, first off, first off, I had no classified oh, documents. You. None. There were no... You can hear them. Now they can hear Bunny. Hooray! Oh, how, how happened? And how many shows has that been for? <laughs> I will never... The world may never know. <clears throat> First off, you can... I did not have any classified documents. None. I would never do something like that. I don't have any classified documents. What's that? The FBI found classified documents in my house. Well, the FBI obviously planted them there because, like I said in the beginning, I have no classified documents. I've never had any classified documents. And even if I did, which I didn't, I have a standing order to declassify any documents that I might have taken uh, home with me from the White House. I mean... Look, I've never said that I didn't have classified documents. Do I have classified documents? Yes, I do. But I have a standing order to declassify all of them. You can't find the standing order. There is no standing order. Well, this is a witch hunt. Yes. And it's like, how can you, how can you believe a word that's coming out of this man's mouth? He is panicking. Which is surprising because nothing says trustworthy more than an alleged billionaire begging supporters to pay all of his legal fees. There's nothing sus about that. No, no, not at all. As the young kids would say. Now, uh, finally, the last bit of Jeff. Uh, here's some good news, Bunny. Okay. Good news, everyone. We can use some good news. Yes! Um, monkeys are having gay sex all the time! This is actually a headline. Monkeys are having gay sex all the time, study finds. Well, this is know, from you, a what? You know Pornhub better than I do. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 to be clear, I hate Pornhub. I hate Pornhub. It creeps me out and I don't use it. I'm more of an ex-hamster. Because I, I can't tell you how many times I have searched for monkeys having gay sex. I, I just keep coming up empty. Yeah. I'm, I'm more of an exhamster.com gal. Yeah. So this is from the website, thepinknews.com, all the gay news you would ever want. Uh, from July 12th, monkeys are having gay sex all the time, study finds. Male monkeys regularly have gay sex and are behaviorally bisexual, according to researchers at Imperial College London. They focused on 236 males within a wild colony of 1,700 rhesus macaw monkeys on a Puerto Rican island over the span of three years. The study found that same-sex behavior among monkeys made the monkeys better friends and more likely to back each other up in conflicts. Well, that's what the Spartans said. 
The findings suggest that same-sex sexual behavior have evolved and could be a common feature of primate reproduction, challenging beliefs that this is rare in non-human animals. Also, uh, same-sex behavior engaging monkeys also had more offspring. Okay. More specifically, with all social mountings of the 236 males recorded, male-on-male -male and male-on-female sexual activities, 72% of the male monkeys engaged in same-sex mounting compared with 46% of different-sex mounting. Most male monkeys are behaviorally bisexual. Now, hear me out, Bunny. Just um, the males? I suggest one of the coolest, most incredible, mind-blowing Planet of the Apes reboot you could ever imagine. Uh huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. Like, man, like, how cool is it to be a scientist? You know, and just be like, hey, you, you want to go watch monkeys fuck? Like, yeah, but let's get a grant for it first. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, uh... We so got $100,000, all... let's go watch us some monkeys fucking. <laughs> oh, so you guys are all scientists. Interestingly, interesting. What do you do? Oh, well, I am working on the Large Hadron Collider and uh, working on discovering... The, the intricacies of the universe itself. Oh, really? What do you do? Oh, well, I'm a chemist and I'm working on the cure to eradicate AIDS completely. Oh, interesting. What do you do? I watch monkeys buttfuck each other. Mm -hmm. yep. And then I write about it. Uh -huh. I am also as equal a scientist as the other two. Yes. To be clear. So I, I somebody, love that. Some, for the sake of humanity, somebody has to watch the monkey's butt fuck. Somebody has you know? to. And, and, somebody and, has to. And, and apparently, and London researchers. researchers. Important knowledge comes from this. Like, Bobo really likes to smell a brute. Uh, and it's, it's fascinating to me that, like, it... See, this news is somehow funnier when you know that it's British researchers. <laughs> it's it's just it's just Oh, looks like they're having butt sex again. Frightfully good. Oh, is it almost tea time? Well, let's watch these two men nut off and then we'll go get a spot of tea. Yes. Like like that's fascinating to me. I love that. So anyway, I'm working on a Planet of the Apes reboot. Oh, I'm calling they're it. They're using the Oxford technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm working on a Planet of the Apes reboot. I'm calling it Queer Eye for the Straight Ape. Damn it! And I, and I think it's gonna be a great. It's gonna be wonderful. We're gonna get like five gay apes, and they're gonna be teaching the straight apes <laughs> yes. how to have. Same sex behavior, SSB, that's what they kept calling it in the article, SSB. So we're going to be working on our SSBs together, all of us. Very excited about that. So that is it for Jeff this week, a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. We are going to take a short break to reset Zoom. And when we come back, it'll be part two of the podcast. Our historical segment, which is called uh, Historic Approximations, or HAP. And I'm very excited this week, because we're talking about Bobby Bonilla. <laughs> and I'm okay. so excited to be talking about Bobby Bonilla, Bonnie. The name is, is tickling something. I'm not sure what. Oh, we'll be talking about uh, my favorite baseball players. Okay. My favorite baseball players is a list different than other people's lists because I don't know anything about baseball. 
but that doesn't stop me from having favorite baseball players. One of my favorite baseball players of all time is Pete Rose. I don't know how good he was, and I have never seen him play, but you know what? I've seen him get choke slammed by Kane, like, at five different WrestleManias. Nice. And that goes a long way for me. So as far as I'm concerned, Pete Rose is amazing, because what? Reggie Jackson? Was he ever choke slammed through a table? I think not! So, that goes a long way for me. So, uh, why don't we take a, a, a short break to reset the Zoom? Do you think we... Should we take a break, Bunny? Should we? We should. We should, okay. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film. Only like two this. minutes, but not going yeah, long. Only, only, only like a minute or two. It takes us a really short amount of time. Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. Do 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 do.